welcome to this video where I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use the Zamprep web portal which is um, a web application that parents can use to track the performance of their children. So you might have received an SMS from uh, the school that your child attends and that SMS might look something like this where you get a message that says visit sec.zamprep.net to track your child's performance and attendance. Log in into Zamprep account or sign up then use ID, blah, 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 when adding a learner. Now, some of you might have installed our mobile app called Zamprep, which is this one, and you might have already created an account there. So in that case, all you do is just to tap on this link. When you tap on it, of course, it will open with your default web browser on your, on your phone or on your computer. And um, once you go there, you can log in using the same credentials that you use when logging into Zamprep app. But if you're a new user, if you haven't been using the Zamprep app, which is uh, this app right here. By the way, this app can be found on Play Store. You simply go to Play Store and then say Zamprep, and then uh, you'll be able to install it. But for now, I want to show you how to use a web portal. So, um, this is actually here. So if, you, if, if you're a new user, you just need to go to where it says uh, Create Account which is uh, this part here, create account, and then you can put in your email address and put in your own password there, um, and then you follow the instructions. So let me just quickly show you how that works. So I'm going to type my, in, um, sorry, I'm going to go to create an account, and then it will ask me for my full name and uh, phone number, email, and, and, and password. So I'm going to put in my email account here is that sorry on the on the full name I'm going to put uh, a name here a name there not uh, my email so I can just say GTS user and then I'll put in a phone number and I can put an email here uh, I think which is gonna be that after typing my password, I'm now supposed to enter this, um, these characters that are put here. So you're supposed to enter these characters exactly as they appear in this text box here. So this is, uh, I think, J. And then we have 77Q7. Of course, if it tells us that the characters are wrong, then we just have to re-enter. So I'll say create account. tap on create account and then it says invalid characters so it gives me another chance to retype those characters but then the password has been cleared so I have to retype so this character is small f small j then 7 small f and then small x and then I'll say create an account so you can see here it tells me your account has been successfully created. However, you need to click on the activation link you have sent to your email for you to be able to log in. So at this point, I need to go to my email. So I'll go to my Gmail and look out for... Uh, so here is an email that has actually popped up. It says Zamprep verification. Thank you for registering an account with Zamprep. Please click here. So here where it says click here, I just tap on that link. And then it will lead me to, then here it says, thank you for confirming your registration. Go to the login page. So I go to the login page. So now I can put in uh, that email that I registered and my password. So I managed to, um, I managed to log in. Now, of course, after logging in, it leads me to this uh, homepage. Um, and of course, um, I'd already added some, some learners here. But what I'm going to do is that I'll go to this page. So when you log into this portal, the first page shows you, you know, the learners that you have, the results that you have, which are the latest results. And there's also this page that shows you academic progression of the learners that you, you added. So I'll go to the page that says learners. If you check on the left menu here, there's one that says learners, there's one that says results. 
So I'll go to learners and what I want to do is to remove these learners so that I can show you how to add learners. Um, so I'll scroll down, scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see where it says select learner to delete. So I'll select that one and I'll delete. And then I'll also select the other one and say delete. So if I go to my home page, if I go to the dashboard, you see there, you get a message that says, please add at least one learner to get started. Click on learners below or use the menu on the left. So I, I don't have any learners here and no results. Now, if you go back to that message that you got, that SMS that you received from your school, um, there's this part here that says use ID. And then in my case, there's an ID that has been given there. So I'm going to get this ID and use it to add my learner. So when I get to the system and I go to this portal, if you tap on your menu and then you go to learners, you see here there's where it says view or add learners. So I'll tap on view or add learners. So in this text box that says enter PPID, that's where I'm going to type that number that I got, which was this one. I'll say get learner. And when I do that, it will actually add the learner here. This is the learner that I've um, uh, gotten. And uh, if you go to your homepage, if you go to dashboard again, now you, you see that there's actually one learner. So it shows the name of the learner. Now, in case you have more than one child, you can still go back to learners, view or add learners. And then you type, let's say, the next one, two, three, two, five, nine, one. And then I say get learner. Then again, it will add the second learner. So this will be the, these will be the children that I uh, received. I mean, whose IDs that I received. So basically, look at the message that you got, and then you can add the learners that way. Now, after you added the learners, you can then view the results. Of course, there are other things that you might be able to see here. If you go to the, if you go to dashboard, you can immediately um, track the academic performance, for example, the progression. So this one shows you the average scores that each child got in each term. Right? 2022 term 1, 2022 term 3, 2023 term 2. You're able to see those uh, those results there. And here, of course, it shows you the results that are there, you know, the latest results that you have in the system. So if I want to view more results, you go to the part that says results. And you can see here in this menu, you have where it say you have the simplified view, you have a detailed report card, you have subject ranking, and you have track performance. So I'm going to start with a simplified view. And I'll tap here where it says simplified view. And from here, I can select the learner. So let me pick the first child. And then for the terms, let's say I want to view 2023 term 2. And then I say view. Um, so of course, here I get a message that says that uh, this child has no active exam prep subscription. You can only view all results excluding for the current and previous term. Now, this service, of course, um, comes with a subscription, and I'm going to show you later how that happens. But you're able to view past results. You know, for example, this is for 2023 term 2. I'm able to see that. Uh, it will show the you know, the overall position in class, it will show the name of the school, the points that the child got in the basics, the pass rate, the scores, uh, for example, the highest score, the average score, the lowest score. It also lists the basic subjects there. Uh, it also shows the class teacher's comments and the head teacher's comments. And then next will follow the results for each subject. So it will show the subject name. It will also show the score that the child got. And next to that, it will show whether the child maintained the score you know, because it compares with the previous term. It will show whether the child maintained or went up or went down. So if you scroll down, as an example, you can see here for English, this child, actually, you see that there's a green arrow there. It shows that this child went up by 12 points. That means in the previous term, they got uh, 88 out of 100. And then the other thing that it shows you is what was the class average and what was the grade average what is the child's position in class and what is the child's position in grade? The same thing is shown for all the other subjects there. So this is what is known as a simplified view. In fact, you're able to print this out if you you know if you need to print out. I think from on the phone when, when you do that it might produce like a, a PDF. So you actually get this in, in PDF form.
this will be your, your report. So getting back to the let me get back to the system here. So if I go back to the main menu results and now the next one that I want to show you is the detailed report card. So if you click on the detailed report card, um, again, I can select this child here. I can pick, say, 2023 Gem 2. If I save your report card, of course, I'll still get that pop up that says that no, this child needs to subscribe. Um, but if you scroll down here, you actually be able to see a full report card. You know, you see a a full report card that shows the name of the school and their contact details, the name of the PPO, the term there and the year for each subject, what was the end term score, what was the final score, the class average, what was the grade average, position in class, position in grade, grade, and then there are all these comments, you know, the standards and the comments from the teachers. You'll be able to see the list of the best six subjects, the points in six, the subjects recorded, subjects passed, all these different details here. Then it also even show you the different assessments uh, for that particular term. So if there's more than one assessment, for example, there was end of term, mid term, or term, test one, test two, you'll be able to see all these different assessments here. And you're also able to print out this. Now I'm demonstrating this from a phone, but you can actually view this on your computer. You basically go to the same link, which is sec.same.net and log in using the same details. You're able to see all this. Then apart from the detailed report card, you're also able to analyze uh, you know the subject ranking of the child if i pick again the same child let's say let's look at his performance at primary um now you can choose which subjects you want you know you're interested in but let's say we want to view the rankings for all the subjects i just save your report and um you can see here it will show me how the child was performing in each day like what number was he in his class this one here is the ranking for for the grade now of course in this case there's only one uh, i think this child was in grade three here there's only one grade three class so the position in class and position in grade are the same if i'm only interested in looking at his you know his ranking in mathematics and integrated science i can pick this two and then say view report and then i can actually see here the blue line there is mathematics and the red one is it integrated science so you can see that for integrated science has been passing number i mean it's been ranking first in every term here 2022 term 1 2022 term 3 2023 term 2 he's been ranking first whereas in math in 2022 term 1 he was number one but at some point in 2022 term 2 he was actually number four so he did badly in mathematics now here you're seeing this sort of um um uh, constricted, I would say, constricted graph because it's a phone. But if you if you if you want to have a, a better view, you can either put your phone in landscape, maybe like that, you put it in landscape, or you can view this on a computer, right? And then you have a better view. So this was the subject ranking. The last report that I want to show you is tracking performance. So if I pick the same child and I say I want to look at his performance at primary section, and again, let's say, um, especially for the part of the subjects, I'm interested, maybe now I want to compare his performance in English, Chinyanja, and literacy in languages, and then I say view report. So now this only applies for this report that shows the performance per term for all subjects. Right? It only applies here, not for all reports. So the first one that you're going to get is his average scores across all terms per subject. So this is showing you, in fact, if I say show the labels as well, this is going to show you his performance. Let me put it in landscape so that I can... Yeah, it will show you his average scores across all subjects for all the terms that he's ever taken this. And then if you go to the next chart, the next chart there, let me remove the labels. The next chart shows us the performance per term for all subjects. And then you can see here, you're comparing English versus Jinyanja versus 
literacy uh, and languages and you're able to see which subject the child has been performing better and which one has been doing um, um, badly. And then when you go to highest average and lowest score per term, this one is able to show you the aggregate scores. What was his highest score? What was his lowest score? What was his average score in each term? And again, if you put this in landscape, you'll be able to see their um, performance. So the subject that has been doing, I mean, the lowest score or the lowest term, that it, the worst term was actually 2020 to term two. And then uh, if you scroll down, you have overall position in class. This is able to show you his overall performance. Okay, it's been two, 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 two. At some point, he passed number three. And then uh, in 2023, term two, he actually did better because then he passed number one, um, followed by 2024, term one. So again, he passed number one. So these are the reports that you are able to get. Uh, of course, as you might have seen, there's this message that says that uh, um, you know, he needs a subscription, but that is only for the current uh, term, right? So if you want to see the performance to include the current term, then you actually need to, to subscribe. Um, so to do that, of course, this is purely optional. Uh, you know, your school is able to send you the results through SMS. So if you're content with the SMSs, you can actually go with that. But if you want to see this detailed analysis and track the performance of a child, then uh, you can simply go to learners and then tap where it says some prep subscription so if i tap there you can see here get a message that says some prep subscription is only 95 quarter for the whole year now this fee sometimes can be revised right now it's on promotion um so you get a 95 but at some point you might see a message that says it's 100 quarter right so let's say i want to subscribe for this boy i just tap there and then i put my phone number here uh, so you put your so only airtel and zamtel are allowed here so i put my number there and then i say process payment and then you wait for a prompt to appear on your on your phone where you know it'll ask you for for your pin so let me just wait a bit Okay, so, so in my case, I just cancelled the, the, uh, the payment because I'm just doing a demo here. Uh, but in your case, when you get a prompt on your phone, you put in your PIN and then uh, you, you, yeah, and then it's going to tell you that uh, the subscription has gone through. And then what you do is that you go to the dashboard so that everything can reload. You go to the dashboard and then everything reloads and then, um, then you're good to go. So... This is it. If you have any questions, you you can call any of these support numbers at the bottom there. This is for the Zamprep support team. But if you have any questions regarding your, your child's uh, results and so forth, please contact your school. So thank you for watching.